All right, so today uh, we would have done a short little kahoot. I put it in your Google Classroom so you can try it on your own and see how you do. It's only five questions, super short. Um, it's an intro to evolution, just kind of seeing what you know and what you don't know already. Now we're going to do the guided notes, um, slides 13 through 17, so pretty short. And so here are, uh, this is slide 13 where we're starting. So let's talk a little bit more about those homologous structures. They again are similar structures, but with different functions. So here you're looking at humans, cats, whales, and bats. I love this graphic because it's color coded and it's labeled. So you can kind of see that, that they have all the same structures, but those structures have very different functions. In a human, this is our arm. In a cat, this would be its uh, forelimb. In a whale, we're gonna have a fin, and in a bat, this is gonna become the wing. So very different functions. Next, we're gonna talk about embryology. So this is when embryos of many different animals look very similar, and it's often difficult to tell them apart. Many traits of one type of animal appear in the embryo of another type of animal. For example, fish embryos and human embryos both have gill slits. So as you're looking across these examples, you can see what they look like in the first stage of development, how they look as they start to develop and what they look like when they're done developing. Um, especially the tortoise and chick, those structures are so similar. So embryology is another way that we kind of compare species because these are things we can't see once they're full grown. Analogous structures have closely related functions, but do not derive from the same ancestral structure. So here you're looking at the at different wings, like this would be a bat, this would be feathers, I'm not sure what this one is, and then of course a butterfly. So they have the same structures, but they don't have the same ancestors. And then lastly, we have something called vestigial structures. And vestigial structures seem to serve no function, but resemble structures with functional roles in other related organisms. So um, muscles to move our ears. Well, we can move our ears slightly, but we can't move our ears like some other animals can, where they can turn them all the way and, and stuff. You see this with uh, your cats, your dogs, uh, and several other species. And so you know, we have pointed canines. We don't really need that because we're not, I mean, we, we use that to, to rip apart meat, but we are not going out and attacking another species uh, with our mouths. So here are all kinds of different things that we have that have different functional roles uh, in other organisms. And then we have biological molecules. We can use DNA, RNA, and proteins. Scientists can determine how related the species are. Consider the gel electrophoresis we've done. By comparing samples between species, we can determine how closely related they are. The more similarities between the DNA, RNA, or protein, the more closely related they are. This type of evidence is more recent and supports predictions made by Darwin. So here you're seeing um, the differences from human hemoglobin proteins. In a gorilla, there is one difference in that amino acid sequence. The rhesus monkey ate, and as you go down, you can see in a lamprey, which is a type of eel, we have 125 differences between us. So it's amazing to think that just one amino acid difference uh, can completely change or show, I don't wanna say change, it shows the relationship of the other species to us. And that was the last slide for today. You are gonna have a TED video um, with questions to answer. So make sure that you do those.